believed that it would be possible for a universe to be a simply a staggeringly successful computer that imagines a universe so perfectly that anyone in the simulation, like a, a character in the Matrix, like that, that, in that little blubby brain, would have an experience that seemed utterly real. Right, right. So a lot of people have proposed that there's a possibility in the whole premise of the Matrix or anything like that is that just as we can build simple virtual realities today with simple simulated creatures living inside them, maybe in the future with vastly more powerful computers you could build more complex virtual realities with more complex simulated creatures inside them. Maybe these creatures could be complex enough that they would actually have brains like ours simulated down to the level of individual neurons and synapses such that the inhabitants of these simulations would be conscious. But what the simulation argument adds to that is that instead of just stopping at the question of how could you ever prove with certainty that we are not in a simulation ourselves, the simulation argument tries to establish a constraint about what we can believe and it tries to show that one of three possibilities is true, although it doesn't tell us which one of them it is. Okay. Um, now, in a sense, this sounds more radical even perhaps than some of the multiverse theories that we've it's heard, but in radical. another sense it's less because it doesn't presuppose any unknown physics. So we're just assuming that it will be possible to build computers that are much more powerful in the future. So what the com simulation argument tries to show is that one of three possibilities is true. The first one is that almost all civilizations at our stage of technological development go extinct before they become technologically mature. Technologically mature meaning having developed all those technologies we can currently show are physically possible given only uncontroversially obtainable physics. So they make a radio, they make a rocket ship, they make a bomb, yeah, they Yeah, you die. could build big computers the size of planets and stuff. We can calculate what performance they would have. We can't build them now, but maybe a thousand years from now people okay. will build them. So first possibility is people at our stage, they just fail to get through to that level of technological maturity. Maybe they destroy themselves on the way. Second possibility is that almost all civilizations that do reach technological maturity lose interest in creating these kinds of ancestor simulations, as I call them. These would be detailed computer simulations of people like their historical predecessors. So they have these powerful computers, they have the ability to program them, but they have better things to do with their computers and their time. Okay, here comes three. I'm right. And three. the third possibility is that we are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. <laughs> um, and the argument in its full version it requires some probability theory, but the gist of it can be grasped quite simply and intuitively. So if you imagine that the, the first two possibilities do not obtain, that means some non-negligible fraction of civilizations at our stage do reach technological maturity and some non-negligible fraction of those you know, are interested in creating these ancestor simulations. They devote some non-trivial fraction of the resources to this end. You can then show that there would be many, many more ancestor simulations than there would be original courses of history because... Why would there be more because, simulations? Because if you calculate the computing power that a technologically mature civilization would have and the computing power that would be required to simulate all human brains, it turns out that the latter quantity is a tiny, tiny fraction of the former. So, in other words, by devoting a tiny fraction of their computational resources to this end, they could create astronomical numbers, billions and billions and so, billions. So of you're dollars. saying that if the assignment in Mrs. Maggetti's class on the planet Xantar in another universe is, all right, everybody, I want you to make a universe with extraordinary accuracy and you to create a billion people with every neuron in place so they all think they're alive. Everybody go. And then Johnny says, can I do it with real matter? Can I, can I make it with like energy and mass? And so no, Johnny, that would require 50 tons of stuff. We're just going to do this with bits and bytes. So everybody in the class does it with bits and bytes. And then in the next year, people just keep hitting the repeat button. And right. So, so the cost of making a pretend universe is just infinitely smaller than making a real one? 
what, maybe not infinitely, but a lot smaller. I mean, to the point where if you have the ability to use some advanced form of nanotechnology to transform planets into computational systems, by using just one planetary computer, just a millionth of its computing power for a tiny fraction of one second, you could run m many, many courses of you know, simulations of human